So we'll be on YouTube here in a few minutes. I like to, I've got so many tabs open, I gotta close these out. All these tabs take up a little bit of a CPU, right? If you're running them. Hey, they use, I think the tabs use RAM more than anything. Yeah, you're right. Unless it's like actively updating like some sort of like Facebook uh, post or, uh, you know, or yeah, like a video is playing or something, then you're really screwed. Yeah. But I, uh, so I'm going to my YouTube account just to make sure that it's streaming before we get too crazy. So let me switch my account to Teach Tech Create. And, and that's why I have this screen i have on my youtube i have my my opener screen up just repeating right yeah and i can't hear anything but i think that there's some noise where is the thing hold on i'm gonna show it so gearing up for a quick live stream talking about my obs settings how i switch scenes how do i show the users what i'm doing uh <laughs> There we go. Yep, it shows that I'm live. Mm. So, I'll get the link. All right. Let's begin. <laughs> right? It's about time. So let's go, I'm gonna go switch my uh, scenes to just me. So I do command shift one for that. And you can see, um, it's not just me. I've got one up there in the top right. So you're in the top right on my right hand monitor. And there's one thing I forgot to do is make a hotkey for my iPhone, but I'll do that in a second. So I can show you how to actually do hotkeys. But I can get rid of one if I do command shift minus and I can bring them back by command shift minus again. So I use the same hotkey to both make him appear and make them disappear and that goes for pretty much all of my different scenes so if i wanted to swap and go from me being big and Juan being small i can go to command shift three and now we flipped right but if i want to get rid of me i do the same shortcut key for this scene command shift minus it takes it takes uh that little box away and my border notice there's a green border around that and it's not quite um symmetric right now i'll, I'll fix that later but so the border itself has the same hot key as the actual video Right, so when I hit Command Shift Minus, it's it's making me and the border disappear and reappear. And if I want to just show one completely full screen, I have them on my right hand screen. Let me give you a quick look of what my iPhone view looks like. So now you should be able to hear me, and you should be able to uh, see both of my screens at the same time. You'll see OBS on the left, and you'll see one on the right. So that right hand screen is dedicated to a full screen view, and it's mostly going to be Skype or Hangouts or uh, Zoom full screen. So I don't have to worry about cropping ever again because they're all about the same size. Um, let me go back to my right monitor. This is where uh, you can see me at the top right and you see one, but let's say you just wanted full screen. I would get rid of me by doing Command Shift minus. If I want to be on the bottom, I do Command Shift plus. And same thing, the hotkey works for both um, showing up and making it disappear. But the reason why I did minus and plus was because if you look at the number, the keypad, the top right is the minus and below that is a plus. So I know always my top right is minus, 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 and my bottom right is plus, plus, right? You know, so it's simple as that. Let me go back to my main screen. And I wanted to show you back to uh, my live stream. If I do Command Shift L for live, it goes back to this screen. You can see me on the bottom right. I can get rid of me by doing the same shortcut key. It's pretty nice. Now you see my Twitter, um, follow me on Twitter thing on the top left, and you see the subscribe on the bottom right. But let's say you're kind of overdoing it, pushing that out there too much. I can do Command Shift S for subscribe, and it gets rid of my subscribe. Command Shift F for follow, and it gets rid of my follow. So now you just have my logo. So let's go back to uh, the screen where it's two by two. I haven't showed you that one yet. So here's a two by two. You can see my both of my Twitter and my subscribe on there. But again, I don't want them on there all the time because it's a little too much for my viewers to be like, all right, get, we get it, you know, follow and subscribe. Speaking of that, if you're on here now, follow and subscribe me. <laughs> right, Juan? There you go. That's what you want. Oh, yeah. I'm going to switch back to my uh, iPhone view for just a... Oh, no, I'm going to go to my left screen. I haven't showed that yet. 
So now this is just my left screen and I wanna show you a couple things here. And Juan, you can just kinda of listen in and I think you'll know what I'm talking about because you've played with this all the time. But I have I have my Yeti and my iShowU in my audio mixers. And iShowU is a whole different story. It's on a MacBook, it's so I can actually record the desktop audio. You can see right now on the meter, the, the Yeti only is actually uh, moving back and forth as I talk. Now, one key thing that you have to figure out pretty quick and do a quick test run, do a record or something, is you, you, need, you need somebody on the other end like Juan to say something so I can see if that I show you meter actually works. So can you say something, Juan? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm looking at your YouTube channel now. Subscribe, everyone. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I saw as the as you talked, the I show you actually went back and forth. And the reason why I say this is because um, there's a lot of things going on in the background, and there's a lot of drivers and a lot of things that are overriding some sound settings. And once in a while, it, something just crashes. So you have to watch that. You don't want to go through an entire live stream and then have to redo it because of an audio problem. Now that we're on my left hand screen with my OBS, which you should see, I'll, let me give you another quick look at my iPhone view here. So you see I have two screens. Again, one's on the right, and on the left-hand side is my OBS. We're going to focus on my OBS settings and how I do these scene switching. So on the left-hand side, I have scenes. And all of these scenes are definitely uh, hotkeyed in, except for I didn't hotkey the iPhone yet. So if I want to switch to any of those scenes, I don't know how clearly you can see this, but I labeled them. Like 01 is me, 02 is my 2x2 two two view, and 03 is the swap, like where, where the right-hand screen is bigger than the left. So if I just tap those, 01, it goes to me, 02, 2x2 two two for us, 03 is just one, and again, I can toggle the smaller box with just my Command Shift minus and Command Shift plus. Let me go back to my left screen. So you're back. we're back on OBS. Those are my scenes, and as you go through them. I also have a scene called Overlays. Now the scene itself is called Overlays, and I'm not gonna use Overlays as a scene itself. I'll click on it, but I think you'll lose my audio. Just, just bear with me for one second. And I just showed you real quick, all it was was that little M, the little emblem that I have. So what I wanna do with overlays is add like my name or any credentials or where I'm at or where I'm located. And I can turn my overlays on and off on any other scene. So right now we're on my left monitor scene. And if you go to my sources over here, I, you can see I have a lot of sources. I show you the Yeti, the left screen, whatever I have on there, but I have one called overlays. I have an actual source called overlays, which is actually another scene. So I can toggle my overlays with a shortcut key. I do command shift zero. So let me let me do command shift zero and you'll see my little emblem disappear and then reappear as I do it because I use command shift zero to make it appear and make it disappear. So it toggles it, it's really nice. You don't have to memorize two different things. You know, on off, it's just the same button. So you're good to go. But I have overlays so that you can put the overlays on anything you want as you uh, go. Um, so that's about it for scenes and uh, sources, but let me show you how to actually set these hotkeys. Hopefully they'll, they'll work. I'm going to click on iPhone because I don't have a hotkey for that. And you'll be able to see what I'm doing from the iPhone view while I do this. So let's try that. Actually, I don't have to do that, but let me, let me click on iPhone anyways, and I'll, and I'll toggle in it in just a moment. So you, you should be able to see me and I click on settings over here and that pops up. Uh, let me, let me switch to my left hand monitor view. Now that you kind of see what's going on, left hand monitor, settings, and you'll see down here in hotkeys, every single scene I have has its own set of shortcut keys you can use. So I scroll down to the new scene that I, I just created, which was the iPhone scene, and it doesn't have shortcut keys yet. So left monitor, and notice, so let me, let me break one down here, uh, this left monitor scene. To switch to my scene, it's command shift left on my arrow. Pad, uh, keyboard, command shift left, so that makes sense, left screen, command shift right is my right screen. But down here, as, as I said, my show overlays and hide overlays is command shift zero. And then my uh, Canon top right and my Canon bottom right is that command shift minus, command shift plus thing. So that's what I have on there. Subscribe, command shift S, follow, command shift F. See how that goes, it's real simple. Um, so let's go down to iPhone and I'm just simply gonna say, hey, how do you switch to the iPhone scene? I'm gonna do command shift I, cause that, that's something I can remember, right? So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now, so I'm on the left monitor, let's try it. Command shift I, and now I'm back to my, my iPhone. So that's how we do it. Now there's a lot of settings, there's a lot of playing around, but getting used to these shortcut keys is pretty simple if you just kinda have some sort of um, 
um, mapping in mind. So we're back to the two by two one. How, I know that you couldn't see most of that, but do you have any more like tips that uh, to do with scenes or sources? No, I, I think you should follow like the number one, like how you taught me, because you taught me. Um, obviously, I, I'm privileged that I have one on one time with you, like you know, if you help like my life support person on this. But um, is to download the program and watch the tutorial and just go, you know, people to 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 do it, to get hands on is watch the video and follow the instructions along. That's really what I think for me. That's what did it. Just get from you know, besides watching the video, download the program simultaneously, and watch the video. To, you know, and just play along and and mess with the settings and just keep tab of the number one tip I have is keep tab of what settings you put where. So if something's wrong, you know where to go backtrack to to make adjustments as you get the settings right. That's oh, important. yeah. To remember what you change from the defaults so that you know exactly what it is that you need to adjust. Yeah, I think we should we should jump on here again probably in a couple of days and do, and talk about, you know, how to actually save the scenes, export scenes and save profiles and then the settings to do with actually getting the uh, bit rates and all that correct. So we'll save that for another time. But but yeah, as far as switching scenes and going back and forth, it is painful uh, for the first couple uh, couple of days you play around with it. But once you figure it out, it's, it's flawless, right? Uh, pretty much. Once you get the handle on it, it's really simple to do. You, you'll find that it's easy to make adjustments. You, you'll just, it'll naturally, you'll flow through the program. You'll just naturally be able to navigate it um, and make your adjustments as you go. Yeah, it's pretty cool that you can actually embed scenes within scenes. Like in my scene, I want another scene as a source. So you can get pretty creative with that as well. <laughs> right. No, no. It's just, you know, download the program, try it, follow the instructions. You'll get the hang of it. Have you ever had an issue where you were going to rename a scene and it kind of renames something below it and it jacks it up? Or have you not played around with it that much? I find that, well, I'm running, so I find that sometimes there's a delay in parts or like, you know, so those are the little things. You got to enter your, I, so what I do is I make sure I make a setting change. I do one setting change. I say, okay. Then I go back into the settings. I'm like, all right, it accepted it. Then I move to the next one, you know, just to make sure that because the smallest adjustment can take your other adjustments and just throw you off completely. So. Yeah, you don't want to like make too many changes because then you don't know what caused something to be fixed or broken. You know, was it, it the one of the five things I changed? <laughs> it feels like make a change, test it, okay, you know, and then see what the next issue is and then fix that. So don't do, right, don't do four changes and then test it because you don't know which four things actually cost the, you know, what's causing the hiccup or, or the, uh, it's the conflict, because sometimes right. it seems like some of the drivers run into conflicts with each other on some of the parts. Right, right. Um, so I had problems with when I was changing this, I was duplicating scenes or I was, I was saying, hey, I want to rename this scene. Uh, it would cause me problems. And I found a fix for it. Like when you go to the rename it, you actually hit you hold command and hit enter when you're done renaming it. And it works. You literally if you hit tab or you go to get out of it, it jacks up all of my scenes. And it's really frustrating. Like it'll literally like rename the scene below it. And then I'm like, I didn't rename that one. And it just jacks everything up. Yeah, so it's just, <laughs> just you got to, you know, play with it and learn. <laughs> That's it. Like, try it out. Yep. So uh, the other thing is there's studio mode, which I didn't show. Once you do studio mode, hopefully I think everything should still work. You've got like your preview in your program. So if you wanted to change like the crop settings and you want to fiddle with it while you're live, you can. And then once it's done, you can do a cut and it'll cut that transition over to the program. I don't mess with that too much because my settings are pretty solid and it takes up more CPU when I'm doing that. Um, but it, by all means, if you want to be interactive with it and change things live, you can do that. Uh, what I do is actually just change it live without doing the preview and program because like if, if, if Juan was cropped slightly wrong, I'll just sit here and mess with it while I'm talking and it doesn't really bother me, but it, it could bother your viewers. So the studio mode might be a, a, a solution for some of you out there. I've become a... Over the last week, I've become a fan of the studio mode. Um, I was on Twitch the other night, um, and I was playing Call of Duty, and all of a sudden, the server booted me off. So, you know, I had a scene. I was working on something. So what I now I have is I have a, I have it in – I go to studio mode. I have a backup scene, and I was making some tweaks, and then, you know, you, you hit it live, so it, it, so you kind of just transition. So I've become a fan of that. But you have to talk. And then at the same time, edit an entire whole other stream, essentially, while you're talking, you know, so it's a lot. 
Oh, but I, yeah. you know, it saves you in some places in case somebody doesn't want you to resize, you know, and it in, 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 in bothers people. You don't resize in front of them. You just kind of make the small adjustments, subtle adjustments along the way. But it does use CPU power. Yeah. So make sure you have it because if you're live streaming and you go to studio mode and your computer struggles, then you're going to run into other issues. So it's, it's it's one thing, you know, it's always it's always something. It's always something. And, and, and it's more complicated, too, because honestly, uh, both Juan and I are using DSLR cameras coming through and, and we're both using USB instead of HDMI out to do it. And uh, we're using third party programs to make certain things happen. So we're relying on a lot of different things to work together, integrated. And so that's why practice makes perfect. We've, we've practiced this, you know, a dozen times already. <laughs> we're finally kind of getting it, I think. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. It's getting to the point where it's all right. All right. Now it's like my hardware adjustments. All right. We're getting to that point. But yeah, it's, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Some of the biggest frustrations I think we've had was, well, we couldn't figure out the bit rates. Like, and so the combination of bit rates and quality, the resolution, the combination of all that was just a, a trick until you showed me the trick of sending 720p out of my camera to save the CPU from doing it. That was amazing. That that works out so much better. I mean, that's a whole other tutorial, but you don't yeah. just mess with the bit rate settings. You have to find out what your sources are, where you want it to end up. So you have to work those numbers out. And there's every every provider or every site that you can stream to provides guidelines on what they accept. So sometimes more is not always better. You know. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, for me, my goal is to reduce the amount of CPUs that's being used during this whole entire thing. So if you can reduce that, you can save a lot of lag. The worst thing that happens, I think, and it happens a lot as we actually are on this for longer periods of time, is we get out of sync with our voices. And that it's frustrating because it's really hard to fix. It's doable, but it's hard to fix. <laughs> that's probably right. I feel that the out of sync scenario is happening as when we first start our CPUs are at max, at max turbo. And as the stream progresses and we're doing more things and we're adding stuff, it, they, they start to throttle back. And I think that's where it starts to lose. It's that's why the bit rates are important. If you get the bit rates, right, it's more consistent throughout, you know, you want to minimize your bit rate inputs from the sources to reduce that CPU usage off the bat so that it never has to go to full capacity and when it throttles itself back from heat, you start to get lags. And so, you know, that's, that's again, a whole new other tutorial, but it's all part of it, getting the bit rate right. This, this, the yeah. data is just so, reduce resources on your system. So it sounds like um, people should, if, if you want to hear us do more tutorials, like on the uh, settings that are for streaming versus recording, um, you should subscribe here, and I'll be on probably at least uh, at least once a week doing some tutorials like this because I like to help other people out, and Juan does as well. Um, so we have scenes, profiles, settings, and then maybe some advanced uh, settings we can talk about. So uh, stay tuned, everybody, and thanks for listening to this this live session. I hope it actually worked out good. Uh, thanks, Juan, for being a part of the show, <laughs> and I hope you come back for the next one. Thank you for having me on. And, and to hit the subscribe button oh yeah and uh if you like we can start um when i talk to you i want to get your logo and how to find you on your twitch stream so how to so how could viewers find you right now before we call this one quits um you can go to twitch.tv slash dart one sandoval i'm working on the name but that's where you'll find me <laughs> yeah so send me a logo one and next time we're on i'll make it pop up when we when we talk about it so that we can get you some uh, subscribers on there on your sure. twitch all right all right well any questions leave in the comments and i will respond and come back to you so thanks for uh stopping in